I am one lucky guy. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine the wonderful places that photography would take me or the great people I'd meet along the way. From Walden Pond and Cape Cod and the Maine woods in the east to the Ozark Mountains and the Texas Hill Country in the middle to Yosemite and the Sierra Nevada Mountains in the west. I am fortunate to have had some extraordinary experiences. My love affair with Yosemite and the Sierra Nevada goes back many years. I've been photographing in Yosemite for over 20 years, but didn't learn until late 2006 that I would be illustrating the 100th anniversary edition of Muir's classic, My First Summer in the Sierra. Coincidentally, my publisher was also John Muir's publisher, and Henry David Thoreau's as well. How's that for serendipity? Over the next three and a half years, I read and reread the book, made notes of passages that resonated with me, and did my homework to identify and visit as many places as possible mentioned in the book. I also set out to track down Muir's original illustrations from the 1911 edition, reviewed existing images from my portfolio, and put a strategy together for capturing new images to accompany Muir's text. The photographs in the book span a 12-year period, but, as it turned out, two-thirds of the photographs ended up being taken between 2007 and mid-2010. I felt that to do the book justice, I really needed to experience it as best I could. Because most of Yosemite is still wilderness, many of the photographs show scenes much as they might have looked like in Muir's day. Others clearly show the Yosemite of today. Although I've done many solo hikes in and around Yosemite, I prefer company on extended wilderness days. In this respect, I am very fortunate that over the last 10 years, in cooperation with Yosemite Conservancy, I have had the honor and privilege to spend many months in Yosemite's wilderness with a group of talented photographers I am proud to call friends. Charles Kramer, Carl Krober, Keith Walklet, and Mike Osborne, also known as Oz. Together, we have had some wonderful adventures, and with Yosemite Conservancy produced the book First Light, Five Photographers Explore Yosemite's Wilderness in 2009 and our Yosemite wilderness trips continue to this day. Hopefully, you'll be seeing more books from this group in the future. At its core, My First Summer in the Sierra is a book about experiencing. Experiencing in 1869 what is now the high country of Yosemite National Park for the first time. It's a book about discovery and adventure and pure, unadulterated joy. John Muir wrote in My First Summer in the Sierra, no words will ever describe the exquisite beauty and charm of this mountain park. From my point of view, John Muir has come closer to describing the wonders of Yosemite and the Sierra Nevada better than anyone, ever. I am proud to be associated with the 100th anniversary illustrated edition of John Muir's My First Summer in the Sierra, and to have the opportunity to introduce John Muir and his writings to a new generation. Muir described it wonderfully with words, and I can convey it better through photographs and video, so let's experience a little of John Muir's wilderness. This is really like a, a 
different world back here. There have been several big snow slides while I was here. They were really interesting and cool to watch. I'd like to get one on video. Look at this. Charlie, there's a bear right by your tent. For real. Got it. I got it. Well, as you can see, the, the temperature is on the way up. It is now 10.1. It's a heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heat wave. A little while ago, it was 9.8. I think it was probably about 9.6 when I got out of my tent this morning to take a leak. So then th things, things were very successful. I did not pee all over myself, although I do not know how. And... Uh, you don't have no idea how hard it is to get dressed properly. There is a procedure, you know, when when you're when you're that cold. First off, your t-shirt tucks into your underwear. That's just the way it it happens. Your t-shirt tucks into your underwear. Then your long john shirt tucks into your long john bottoms, and then your shirt tucks into your pants, which have to be buttoned, which <laughs> isn't very easy with those gloves on much less mittens. I didn't have mittens on at the time. But I like to say, get that camera up here, boys. My eyes are right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's awful testy this morning. <laughs> Anything to add? Uh, I was going to say, it's impossible to soil yourself in this temperature because nothing comes out in liquid form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pumped it right before I went to bed. It's frozen solid. Frozen solid. Through and through. Hard to get that down in one gulp. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, it's day 13, Friday, 3 o'clock. 
and finally after almost two weeks we're having rain except it's the wrong time and they say that it's supposed to do this tomorrow afternoon when we're going to be hiking out so that's not good here's my house what do you think and it's starting to rain Well, it's now 4 o'clock, and it's still raining. By the way, there's my haul from the trip. Look at all that film. That's good. Well may the Sierra be named not the Snowy Range, but the Range of Light. John Muir. My name is Scott Miller, and I hope that you enjoy the 100th Anniversary Illustrated Edition of John Muir's My First Summer in the Sierra.